<laughs> hey Thomas, guess what just came out? Oh hey, you know, I was just playing some Banjo-Kazooie. This might be one of the best video games I have ever played, ever in my whole life. Uh, that's awesome because it's just, it's so good. The music, the gameplay, the stories, the characters. Well, I mean, even the dynamic of the bear and the bird. It's just classic by now. I cannot it, believe they have not made a sequel since Banjo Tooie. They just. I mean, if I made Banjo Kazooie, I would totally make a sequel. Will you shut up and listen to me? Um, <laughs> sorry, man. What is it? Thank you. Yuka Laylee Banjo Kazooie is. and salutations to you all and welcome to the Toka Show. Sorry I've been gone the past couple weeks. I've been really, really busy. But I'm back now, so whoop de freaking do Today we will be reviewing Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Lily, Yuka Kazooie, Speed Racer the video game. Wait, what? Yuka Laylee is the spiritual successor of the prodigy that was Banjo Kazooie. Banjo Lazooie came out hot on the heels of the legendary Super Mario 64 and was somehow a better 3D platformer. That's right, I said it. Yuk Joe Kalele is better than Mario 60 Galaxy. Am I having a stroke? Does anyone else taste metal? Banjo-Kazooie and Yuka-Kazooie is what is known as a collectathon, where the main focus is to collect a ton of items in a handful of levels. This might not sound as fun nowadays, but it's honestly genius. The fun comes from studying every single thing in a huge map, trying to find all the items by completing tasks or just exploring. It is a lot like Super Mario 46, but with more memorable characters, things to collect, and moves. Yuka 3E takes all the good from Banjo-Kazooie and revamps it for a modern console generation. But, does it live up to the hype? Well, why don't you just go buy it and see for yourself? What am I, your mom? Can't tell you everything you gotta do. What? I just wanna play video games, that's all I wanna do. All I wanna do. Tiny Guitar starts off with the great duo hanging out at their crib just chillin' because that's what you do when you're best friends. Boy, you got a friend in me. When the boss of the game, Capital B, uses a machine to steal all of the books in the world because he wants the magical book that Laylee and Yuka have? Uh, apparently this book has the power to destroy the world or something. I don't really know, it doesn't make much sense, but I freaking love it. Long story short, it's up to our friendly neighborhood Bat Lizard Man to collect all the pages. And no, I'm not three years old, the game actually calls them pages. And I love that too. The game controls very simply. You have jump, camera, attack, but you can also get a ton more moves as the game goes on. The first thing you notice is how many lovable and memorable characters there are shoved into this game. Every character just melts my heart and fills the hole in my soul where my childhood wonder used to be. I mean, look at some of these character designs. Look how this snake is wearing pants! Do you see that? That's Einstein levels of genius. And this duck, he's in a gumball machine! How cool is that? Don't even get me started on the pig nights. <laughs> oh my gosh, pig nights. <laughs> also, Shovel Knight is in this game. Do with that what you will. The level designs in Doris Daily are a little confusing. Don't get me wrong, most of it is pretty well done and creative, but there were way too many times where I wanted to stop playing simply because of how confusing the level layout was. Even after playing a good chunk of it, I still probably couldn't tell you where to find certain parts of the level. The only thing that helped me push through in those times was the music. Oh, Holy Caesar's Ghost, the music! Wait, Holy Caesar's Ghost? <laughs> 
I guess this is what passes for script writing these days. They got the legendary Grant Kirkcope to do the music, the same composer for Bandlay Kazuyuk, and he blew it out of the park. A lot of the music sounds very similar to the masterpieces from that game, but I'm not complaining. I like it that way. One thing I do miss about the old soundtrack was how the overworld theme would change its instruments depending on where you were in the castle. Remember when I said that there were a ton of moves to learn in this game? Well, that's kind of a big component in Yuka Snuka. You can super jump, glide, shoot sonic waves, fire, ice, and water, and you can eat things to absorb their properties or use Yuka's tongue to grapple onto things. There are more moves in this game than there are Power Rangers in the current season. Look it up. There's a lot. Let's do it! Mastodon! Pterodactyl! Triceratops! Saber 2 Tiger! Koala, koala Bear! I want I want to be I want to be the koala bear. The 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 koala one. K koala bear. The only other thing I don't like about Ukulele Banzu is how you have to use your collectibles as currency. I much prefer the old game where you could always see how much you collected and how much is left. It's actually really irritating that there is no way to know what's left in a level. Yuko Lazy does an amazing job in being faithful to its predecessor while still making a brand new IP. It's colorful, creative, beautiful, sounds amazing, plays great. It might take you a little bit to really get into it, but it's a really solid title and definitely one of the best games of the year so far. I love this game. Probably not as much as Bandai Yukzu... Yuka Ban Lei Lei... Zuika Banjo Lu Lao. <laughs> it's a good game. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. As always, if you liked what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel, The Toka Show. New videos come up every Tuesday, and I have Let's Plays every Wednesday and Friday. Alright, see you guys!